I'm Dr. Les Lynette, and I hope to help you understand psychiatric problems. Do not underestimate how damaging adult ADHD can be, even though sometimes such an adult may seem to be functioning, functioning reasonably well. Some with ADHD even function at a very high level without treatment. Mr. T was a 40-year-old man who came to see me for depression and marital problems. He was an executive in a medical research company and was earning half a million dollars a year before his treatment with me. We worked together on the problems for which he had come. But early on, I told him that I thought he also had ADHD. Mr. T chose not to treat the ADHD, even though he agreed that he probably did have it. After a year together, he said to me, let's treat it. One day soon afterwards, he came into the office smiling. It's really amazing, he said. Two hour meetings now take half an hour. Today, Mr. T no longer works as an executive for that company. He owns his own company. Tom came to see me as a senior in college with a 4.0 grade index, straight A's. He too had achieved this without any treatment and without any ADHD diagnosis having been made up to that time. But the problem he identified to me was that he could be difficult in his relationships with others. Tom had enough symptoms of distractibility and impulsivity to make the diagnosis of ADHD. We treated it quite successfully, and he subsequently went on to marry and now has a good job. However, if you broach the subject of Tom's stopping the medicine, his wife will fight with you. She knows that he is much easier to live with on the medication. He has more patience and better frustration tolerance. Tom's story illustrates an aspect I want to emphasize. One day I received a frantic call from his wife that Tom was at the airport about to leave on a business trip to England. He had called her because he couldn't find his medicine. Now you might think that with straight A's in college without medication he would be able to handle a five-day business trip without medication. But both Tom and his wife know that there is a difference when Tom is off the medicine. By the time I returned his wife's call, Tom was already in the air over the Atlantic Ocean. I told her I could not prescribe in England and that he should speak with a doctor in London and ask for a short five-day supply of medicine. He did that and all turned out well. What is impressive is how clear it was to both of them that Tom would have an entirely different experience on that business trip without the medication. Roy entered my office well-dressed, wearing a tie and sports jacket. He told me his mother was a psychologist and that he had graduated from college with top honors, summa cum laude the Latin phrase for with highest praise. He also told me he thought he had ADHD. Now, like a good psychiatrist, I asked him what he meant. He explained that he always knew he was very smart, but as he advanced in school, the work became more complex and demanding. He invented his own system, a kind of lazy Susan in which he could get himself to do math for five minutes, then history for five minutes, then English, and so on. Eventually, he would get back to math and then the other subjects. He managed to complete his work. He did very well. In fact, as I said, graduated summa cum laude. After graduation, he obtained a good job and did well on that job. The reason he had come to my office was that he had recently been promoted and he could not find a lazy Susan to keep track of the increased responsibilities that came with his promotion. I agreed with his diagnosis and we treated his ADHD. 
Roy went on to do even better and received yet another promotion. Mrs. M is another example of someone with ADHD flying under the radar. She is a 29-year-old woman who has had a successful career as a fundraiser in addition to previously having held an administrative position in state government. Her charming, attractive, and intelligent personality had carried her far. She had never manifested behavior problems and was generally thought of as a lovely, kind, and generous woman. However, she did manifest subtle symptoms. Although quite intelligent, she had never completed college, finding it difficult to apply herself to the demands of serious studying. Her loving husband also described her as maddeningly distractible. He would be talking with her, and she would notice a spot on his clothing or some aspect of his appearance which would catch her attention, often leaving her husband feeling that she wasn't paying attention to him. Actually, she was paying attention to him, but paying attention to what caught her attention, not necessarily what he was saying. He understood from our sessions that her focus on the things that caught her attention did not mean that he was unimportant to her, but despite this knowledge, he couldn't help feeling a kind of rejection every time she seemed distracted by something else when he would speak with her. Friends and acquaintances, too, sometimes commented that she seemed to ignore them. Her seeming inattention sometimes created the mistaken impression that Mrs. M didn't like them or that she was stuck up. Her husband adored Mrs. M. He held her on a pedestal for her beauty and kind and considerate nature, but he found her paradoxical. He reported one incident in which she was driving behind someone who had slowed down before a fork in the road. Normally very considerate, Mrs. M immediately honked at the driver. This took Mr. M aback. Give him a break, her husband said. He's probably just not sure which fork to take. This was an example simply of her impulsivity and difficulty waiting. Another example he provided involved her waiting for red lights to change. She would sometimes conclude the light was broken. In a moment, however, the light would turn green. She really has a problem with patience, he said. She needs things to happen. She just can't wait, but it causes problems. At bedtime, Mrs. M had difficulty sleeping. She had discovered that the distraction of having the television on made it easier for her to fall asleep. Without the television, her mind would flit from thought to thought, keeping her awake. Commonly unappreciated is that stimulant medication may, but does not necessarily, keep someone with ADHD awake. In Mrs. M's case, the medication resulted in her being able to lay quietly in bed and fall asleep without racing thoughts and without the need for the, t for the television. She also now had more patience and, to her husband's delight, was less distractible when they spoke together. The foregoing are all stories of high-functioning adults with ADHD who, while undiagnosed, had still managed to do well in life. 